And so by asking that one fundamental question, am I solving a business problem, you will save yourself months of headache, rebuilds, and dev hours, all because you focused on solving the problem and only solving the problem, nothing else. All right, what is going on guys? So today I have kind of a more informal little advice video for something that I've learned over the course of building out insider viz and getting into the world of startups is I have a huge, I have a really bad habit of over engineering things. When I first built insider viz, I over engineered it a lot. When I did my first projects back in high school, I would over engineer them. I would take whatever new cool thing I had learned, whatever new cool language I'd seen, whatever new Reddit post I see, whatever it was, I would take that and I would apply it to a very basic problem. I would take a basic CRUD app, a restaurant app, a simple cron job, or whatever it is, and I would over-engineer it. I would try and add a full massive custom microservices architecture to an app that's going to serve to 30 people. And I would do all of this nonsense. And the reason why I would do that is because I was more worried about what I thought was cool and what would be cool from an engineering perspective instead of actually working on solving a business problem. And that's the question I want to really emphasize for you today. And the thing that you should, that I hope you you take away from this is that you need to ask yourself every time you go to make a technical decision or a business decision or a feature decision, am I solving a fundamental business problem? Is this creating value for me or the customer or the business or whatever? Am I creating value from this or am I just doing this because I think it would be cool? Before I go into more detail on that, I first want to shout out, um, first of all, thank you for all the support over the past month. It has been absolutely phenomenal. We are getting very, very close to the end of November. Currently, we are almost to 800 subs right now. So, if you are not subscribed, please subscribe. We're trying to hit a thousand by the end of the month. Got about five days. I think we can do it. So make sure you hit the sub button and yeah. So this right here is going to be a basic example of imagine you were tasked with building out a little SaaS that needed to manage library books and needed to manage users and allow those users to check out library books, do some basic stuff with them, so on and so forth. And these were two different patterns you came up with. So in the planning stage, you're like, okay, how are we gonna build this out? You whiteboard out two different things. One of these is a massive custom microservices architecture. And one of these is just using the T3 stack or maybe like Django or some other all-in-one package that can kind of just get the job done in one code base. First, what we're gonna look at is this crazy microservices architecture. This is what I am prone to doing. I am prone to build building out something crazy like this for something simple. I love building out these systems. I love architecting things. I love learning new things. So I am very easily drawn to something like this. And this is a good pattern. This would have a GraphQL gateway, which I'd probably write using Apollo and TypeScript. So I'd have an Apollo server right here, which would then connect to all these individual services all written in Go that were connected together via GRE via gRPC and all each running in their own separate container. Each can be scaled individually, all this stuff. This is a really great architecture and this is going to scale really well to huge amounts of users and to a massive team working on the app. So this will work really well, but we got to think about how long is this going to take to build? This will take months to build probably. This is a very complicated architecture and we're using some pretty heavy boilerplate technologies in here. GraphQL requires a lot of boilerplate and a lot of setup to get working. And gRPC also requires a huge amount of setup and time investment to get going properly. It's also very difficult to host and manage and run all that stuff. It's not nearly as trivial as running a REST API or something like that. It takes a lot of work to get up and running. Yeah, we need to get Docker set up, then we need to figure out how we're going to host all of these, then we need to set up a sort of development pipeline of a CI CD for each of these microservices. How do we scale that? How do we manage each one individually? How do we make sure that they're communicating together correctly? How do we make sure that they're versioning to the same thing? If these are all connected to the, to the same database, how are we going to manage that they're all pointing to the same version of the database, that we keep the migrations in sync, all this stuff. You get question on question on question, which is going to lead to months of headache and huge time and money investment into actually building this out. So at the end of the day, if you get all of this done, you are going to be left with a super strong, super fast, super well scalable, both in terms of end user and dev team, you're going to end up with a great app, but it's going to take you months to do. And at the end of the day, all it's going to do is allow you to accomplish the base functionality, which you can also accomplish over here. So let's take a look at how we would actually implement it here. So if we're using like, I'm just going to use the T3 uh, stack as an example, because this is something I know pretty well. So 
Basically, all we need to do is we need to spin up a next app. We need to add TRPC in there to connect our front and back end together. This is all in one project so we can share TypeScript and we can share types from front to back end. So our front and back end are strong typed. All of our back end calls are going to be end to end type safe. So calling stuff on the front end is very easy and quick. Our front end and back end teams can easily communicate and easily understand each other. The back end can then use something like Prisma to communicate with the database. So instead of writing custom SQL, it's just going to use Prisma, which is fast and easy to use and allows us to keep those types from the return so then we can easily type our return values that we pull out of the database really simple really quick really easy so this entire thing which on this entire thing which at its core is basically creating stuff and reading and writing out of a database this whole thing can be implemented very fast using this stack let's say for example this could pro I don't know the exact time frame for you specifically, but I can tell you from if I was implementing all of this, this would probably get done in several months. This would probably get done in like a week or two. This would be very quick and very easy to build. So at the end of this, we have one that's going to take us months and months to build and one that's going to take us a couple weeks to build. And both of these are going to solve the business problem. So both of these are solving the business problem. And all we care about is do these solve the business problem, then we're going to want to go with this one. And now this is in the context of a startup and a small scale thing that we're trying to get off the ground, the con the sort of time frame of an MVP. Obviously, if we are trying to scale this to 10 million users right off the rip, this is some uh, side project at Google or whatever, then this will not solve the business problem because this won't scale as well and it won't be as fast as this uh, architecture will be. Although arguably this will still scale very well because we're using the, we would end up hosting this on something like Vercel, which can easily and efficiently leverage the serverless architecture to make our TypeScript backend scale rapidly and easily and infinitely. If you're running TypeScript in its own like cloud instance or whatever, so you just have a TypeScript server running on one instance and then a Go server running on the other, the Go server is going to be able to scale way harder, way faster, and way larger than the TypeScript one ever, ever could because Go is a more efficient language. But if we're leveraging the serverless architecture, then we don't really care about that because then we can just create more TypeScript instances and who cares? It doesn't matter if they're not the most efficient things in the world, they get the job done. Left with these two different options and we have to pick, okay, which one am I going to go with? And nine times out of 10, I'm going to go with this one. Don't over engineer things. You develop and de make decisions with the business first, with the, am I adding value to customers first? You end up making these sort of you end up not reinventing the wheel, which is a very good thing. This will get to market much faster, which means that you're going to be able to start getting customers faster. You're going to start getting feedback faster. You're going to start getting SEO faster. You're going to start getting rankings faster. You're going to be able to talk to people about it faster. It's going to really help grow your business. And in that those months that you save and those thousands of dollars or probably tens of thousands of dollars in dev hours, if you're not the one building it, that you would save by using something like this versus something like this, it's going to make your life a lot easier. And at the end of the day, if your startup scales, if your app scales, you can move over to something like this. You can rebuild this over here if you have the money and the capital and the time. But when you're just getting off the ground, all you should be caring about is solving the problem. Find that one problem, find that thing you're solving and solve it. I was guilty of not doing this soon enough or efficiently enough on Insider Viz. I love, like I said earlier, I love over-engineering things. I love building crazy systems. I love doing things for the sake of doing them for learning, all that stuff. And I ended up Insider Viz should have been shipped way sooner than it was. We had a working MVP middle of last summer and we didn't ship until like October. And the reason is because we kept adding new features. We kept adding new stuff that we thought would be cool. We kept adding extra fancy stuff here and there. When the fundamental value that we're adding is our cool visualizations and data feeds, which were done in June, we did not need to spend all those months adding all this extra stuff. We should have been shipping. And then you add all that extra fancy stuff on top. And every time you do go to add something you need to ask yourself is this going to add value is this going to add value to my end users is this going to help my funnel is this going to help get people on the site is this going to help get is this going to help get people to sign up so on and so forth you got to make sure that these things are adding value so hopefully that makes sense again i know this is pretty informal and basic but really the key message that i hope you get across is Make sure that you're adding value, make sure that what you're doing is actually useful and make sure that it is helping to propel your business forward, especially at the start. These first few months are key and you can't lose and time is of the essence and the advantage that you have over Google or Apple or Facebook or Amazon or any of these massive companies is you can move fast. You can use the T3 stack to build an app in a week. They can't. So use it, abuse it and enjoy it. So yeah, hopefully that helps you out. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.